nobody came. There are really two stories here. The first story, the king's son, his wedding banquet was prepared. We can imagine how lavishly appointed the hall was, with tables of rich, beautifully prepared food, roasted and herbed oxen and calves. I've never had oxen. Think of a fine steak, I guess. The fountains of fine wine. The strolling musicians, right? Nothing but the best for the son of the king. Maybe it would be like the feast described in our reading from Isaiah today. A feast of rich food. A feast of well-aged wines. Of rich food filled with marrow of well-aged wines strained clear. It's hard for us to imagine in this time and place, it's hard for us to identify with an invitation being given to us by a king, right? How many of us know kings? Does anybody here know a king? Okay. How many of us have had such invitations? And then I think, if we did, who of us would turn down such an invitation? Such an opportunity to be in relationship with someone in such power, in such an elevated position. A king, at the time that this parable was told, literally had the power of life and death over his people. A good king would have provided the living in one way or another, for each of his subjects. And for the king to give a banquet would have been the event of the year, maybe a lifetime. The announcements about the banquet would have gone out long ahead, lots of couriers. The king is going to have a banquet. The day is coming. Somehow they had posters. I don't know. But picture the excitement that would have been in all the little villages. The hubbub about what would be served and who else would be invited. Only the best people, of course. Would we know anyone else who was going? And could it possibly be for us? And those who made the clothing, they would have had some kind of insider knowledge, right, about what all the attendants were wearing. And then as the banquet time grew closer, the king sent out his slaves to bear a reminder message to the people who had been invited. They were blessed. And we might say he had his staff make up follow-up phone calls, kind of, if it were today, or maybe texts. And Jesus says, and this is amazing, Jesus says they would not come. They would not come, those who were invited. We think we would never do that. Well, the king then sends out other messengers to call those invited to come. Those who were expected by being invited that they would come. All is ready. All is prepared. Come to the wedding banquet. And those slaves were disregarded. They were ignored. They were pushed off. They were even attacked and killed. We would never do that. It serves those people right, we might think, that the king sent troops to destroy them. But this king, this king in the story Jesus is telling, this king does not give up. This king is determined that the banquet hall will be full. This king will have a celebration for the wedding of his son. And so he sends his slaves out one more time, and he says, go into the main streets. Invite everyone, everyone you find to the banquet. And so they do. They gather the good and the bad, says Jesus, so that the wedding hall is filled with guests. And then the rejoicing, the celebration begins. We can imagine dancing and laughing 
and all kinds of merriment with all that fine wine, right, as they celebrate the wedding of the son of the king. Of course, we can imagine ourselves at this banquet. We, of course, would come when the king invited us. Here comes my second story, and you know this one pretty well. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph had a dream in which the Lord appeared to him, saying, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For any child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Mary will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. And Jesus, who was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Jesus, who was called Emmanuel, God with us, announced the arrival of God's rule to the people who were long awaiting it. He announced it this way. He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Like the prophet Isaiah, Jesus spoke of the kingdom of heaven as a great banquet, a great feast. And those insiders, those insiders did not recognize Jesus' authority. And they went on about their own ways to their work and to their homes. Not only did they go on about their own ways, they killed the forerunner, they killed John the Baptist, the messenger of God, who was proclaiming God's rule, even as people of old had killed the prophets. And so, Matthew writes to us and tells us that the invitation was extended to others. The alternative crowd, the non-pious the outcast in Jesus' society, the disadvantaged, those marginalized by poverty and disability. And many of them came. And Jesus spoke in parables, and he taught them. He taught the people about the kingdom of heaven. Here are some of the things he said about the kingdom of heaven, many of which we've read about this year. The kingdom of heaven is like someone who sows good seed in the field. But while everyone slept, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It's like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. It's like a net thrown into the sea, which catches fish of every kind. And then he said, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers to work in his vineyard. The kingdom of heaven will be given to a people that produces fruits of the kingdom. And finally, we hear today, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a banquet, a wedding banquet for his son. Which brings us back to the first story. The first part of this banquet story we heard today in Matthew's Gospel would have been a familiar story to the early church. Those outsiders who had followed Jesus, who formed the early church, they recognized themselves as those who were present at the party where God was the host. Okay, They would have recognized the messengers who were killed as the prophets and the early Christian missionaries. And they would have seen the invitation to the good and the bad to be the church's outreach to both Jews and Gentiles. They would have understood this. 
And I think when we hear this story, maybe I should only speak for myself. When I hear this story, I plant myself comfortably inside that banquet hall also. And I know all those pieces. And I'm positive I'm there. And I'm prepared to breathe a sigh of relief that I am not like those who refused the king's invitation. But then, wait, the story isn't quite over. When the king comes in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who's not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And the man had no answer. And he was cast out of the party, out of the banquet, into the surrounding darkness. And I'm thinking, he's thinking, hold on, I came to the party. I'm here, not like some others who didn't show up. What do you mean I'm not properly dressed? Oh, a robe of righteousness? I should be clothed in Christ? What do you mean? A tree is known by its fruit. And when, Lord, did I see you hungry and give you no food? God's love and goodness are for all. And God graciously invites each of us to the banquet, a feast in honor of God's Son. Will we attend? And if we do attend, will we robe ourselves in garments suitable to the occasion? Garments of love, joy, peace, gentleness, honor, justice, and purity. Those choices, those choices are ours. We are free to decide. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus. Amen.